sound. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. Um, you're welcome to our webinar on promoting independent learning outside of class time. We're delighted to have Mary Claire Halley from the Dublin Adult Learning Centre. Mary Claire will be facilitating today. My colleague Helen Ryan is going to be helping me with um, coordinating. So over to you, Mary Claire, and all the best. Uh, Fergus. Um, hi, everyone. Great to see so many people from all over the country, as I was saying. Um, so today we're looking at promoting independent learning with online tools and resources. And um, as said, my name is Mary Claire and um, I am a tutor in uh, Dublin. Um, so at the moment I'm working with lots of different classes, a spelling class, a basic spelling class, basic IT skills class, um, IT skills level four, ESOL basic, uh, retail skills level four and ESOL level three. Um, and I'm of course, uh, there's a few other little uh, modules thrown in there as well. That is my, my current workstation, my current <laughs> online classroom, you can see there, as probably most of us um, were at home at our kitchen table or at a desk or in our bedrooms, like our students are. Um, so I work in uh, Dublin Adult Learning Centre in Mountjoy Square in Dublin, and I'm also in Warren Mount Centre in Dublin 8. Um, I'm also doing a master's at the moment in and education and training management in e-learning. So I've, I've done a bit of study on, on the things that we will be looking at today. Um, all right, so I'll continue then. Um, so today um, I'm going to introduce the topic, uh, discuss some resources and tools that I use with my groups. And you might have used them before, um, but we'll, we'll look at them and explore maybe different ways of using them. Uh, there'll be breakout rooms um, for about 20 minutes and you'll get to chat about different uh, resources and tools that you use and how you encourage independent learning. Uh, feedback from the rooms then, so maybe some one person from each room will give us feedback and we'll have a bit of a discussion and questions and answers. Um, if you think of any questions, by the way, throughout, feel free to type them into the chat and we'll see if we can get to them either during um, my presentation or at the end of the presentation. Okay. Okay, so um, just throughout this webinar, just consider um, your learner, obviously, uh, and, ac and their access to technology. So what technology are they using? Are they using a tablet, a phone, a computer? Um, are they using a smartphone or are they on a, a Nokia, maybe a, a, a chocolate bar phone as they're called? Uh, consider their goals. So what do they want to achieve? Um, their interests and preferences. So you can consider this when you're thinking of technology and um, when we're thinking of resources and creating materials, we can keep them close to their own interests and maybe their own preferences as well. And of course, the level of learner. So their literacy levels, their language levels and their digital literacy levels, because they might not have, they might have high digital literacy levels and low literacy levels or vice versa. I found in my own experience actually that a lot of my language learners, my ESOL learners, are quite good on computers and using apps and Google Translate and everything like that. And so yeah, just take into consideration how you might be able to adapt these resources and tools for your own learners. Okay, so we'll just take a moment now. Um, and I'll just ask you to type into chat, uh, what is independent learning? What, what is it to you? What is it to your learner? If you want to write your answers into chat there. Yeah, autonomy, great, great word. Empowerment. Motivation, yeah. Being able to work alone and know how, where to find what they need. Exactly, yeah. Um, learning without a tutor, yeah. Motivation again, definitely motivation is key when it comes to independent learning. And um, of course there's different types of motivation having the skills to solve their own learning problems and looking up their own notes. Yeah, responsibility. Yeah, self-taught and responsibility, like taking responsibility for their own learning outside of class time is very important. 
uh, being able to read material to engage with this, yeah, being able to write even if the spelling isn't perfect. Giving a learner the tools, yeah, be in charge of their own learning and self motivated, not uh, and not as much direction, yeah. So being self motivated, not having to to the, rely on the tutor, I guess, to give them the direction. So yeah, um, yeah, great autonomy was a great word there and looking up things for yourself, build your confidence. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of us might have found recently that we've had to move to digital um, online learning maybe or using technology with our learners and just giving them that empowerment, again, that word that was used um, and learning the skills to use the technology um, is definitely building up their confidence, I think. And um, being able to make informed choices independently and developing independence. Great, we'll leave that there. Um, but yeah, some great, great answers there. Yeah, sharing their knowledge and experience and learning without help. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, autonomy, motivation, responsibility, um, all of that is very important in independent learning. Um, I'm glad to see uh, nobody said homework. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like that word, do we? <laughs> um, our students don't like that word either. Um, so we try and not to use it. Um, so yeah, thinking that maybe not homework, but just independent learning and encouraging learners to in learn on their own. Um, great. Grant. So let's move on here now. Um, so these are just three keywords that I, I consider when I'm use, developing uh, materials for my learners and resources for my learners. Uh, first one is enjoyable. Okay, so you want to keep it enjoyable when you're creating materials and using tools with your learners. And making it fun, basically. Um, I mean, we all, I'm sure, we don't want to sit down and read a full page of writing. We want to do something that's a bit more interactive and a bit more fun. A bit more maybe depends on the learning style of the learner, but maybe a bit more visual rather than just text on a page. Yeah. Um, and this relaxes the learner as well and makes them want to maybe participate a little bit more with that. Okay. Um, suitable. Okay. Using suitable tools suitable for the level of the learner for a start, you know, taking that into consideration, uh, keeping it suitable um, for the tutor as well. So you guys, you need to make sure that you're able to use these tools and, and demonstrate to your learner how they can use these tools. Because if you're using tools and resources, you need to be able to build up the material for the learner. Um, and also just to remember uh, the scaffolding and making sure that your learner can use the tool is an important thing. So you might not be able, your learner might not be able to work on these things right away, but you might need to build up their confidence with these tools um, in preparation. Okay, and relevant, finally. Um, keeping it relevant, again, with their interests. I saw a few people mentioned interests and goals there. So keeping the tools that you're using relevant um, to the learner's goals um, and their interests as well, which is great with a lot of these tools because you can tailor them, you know, you can make them suitable to whatever they want. If they're interested in football or cooking or travel, you know, you can create these things with the tools that we're going to be looking at. Um, and purposeful, just keeping it on, on track, on relating to the tasks that you want as well, making sure it's relevant and purposeful. Okay. Okay. And um, just some quotes here and some information here that I have just to keep in consideration when you're talking about um, resources and tools and methods of learning independently. And um, so the tasks should decide the tool. All right, so lots of tools are out there, you know, there's so many. We've probably all been discovering so many in the last year that we need to consider that the task is more important than the tool, okay? So what, what we want the learner to achieve is the main thing, okay? What they should be getting out of it. And um, tools are great, like I said, there's so many of them, but just make sure it's the right tool for the job, yeah? Um, enhance and not replace. I think this is a very important thing to remember. We don't want to replace learning. We just want to enhance it to make it a little bit more, again, fun, enjoyable, suitable. And um, so we want to enhance it and not just replace what you're doing as tutors. Um, again, the introduction of games uh, can be fun, um, but relevant, keeping them relevant. Adult learning, so this is from Nala's own website. So adult learning is all about addressing the needs of the learner, working at a pace that suits them and mapping out a learning path that fits in with their life and interests. I mean, that can be used for, for anything, but especially, I guess, when we're talking about online tools and resources. Um, adapting the tool to the learner, okay? 
and the material, making sure the material is suitable for the learner and relevant um, and keeping it learner centered as we as we try to. Yeah. OK. I hope I'm not going too fast for anyone there. OK, so some like I said, some of these tools you might already be using, but we're just going to look at them again because you might maybe Maybe you've used it a while ago and you want to maybe recap on it and use it again, or you might be able to adapt it in a different way for your learners. Um, so Kahoot, um, some of you, many of you might have heard of Kahoot before. Um, it's an interactive game show type platform. And I was actually just using this at my class this morning. We were actually creating Kahoots with my IT skills level four. So they were creating their own little quiz, um, which was great fun. Um, so it's can be used in class or outside of class time. Um, now, I actually, for my master's, I did a little research project on Kahoot with my learners, and it was based around seeing if they enjoyed using it as outside of class time as a study tool or as a tool to recap what they had learned in class. And um, so I asked 18, or I, I conducted the survey with 18 learners, and 94.4% said they enjoyed using it outside of class and that it was a good way to kind of help them study and recap classwork. One said it was all right, so we'll, we'll accept that, you know. <laughs> um, but here's a quote from the survey. So I liked playing the quiz on Kahoot because it really helped jog my memory of what we learned in class. I found it great for keeping things fresh in my mind. Okay, so they were using Kahoot to, to kind of go through the words that we had I've covered in class. And um, so I would put up a little picture and I'll show you a demonstration in a minute. And they would click on the spelling, the correct spelling of the word then um, on the Kahoot quiz. Um, now you can use Kahoot inside uh, class time as well on the screen, or you can set it for the learners to do it themselves on their own. Um, so I'll just, I'm going to give you the demonstration here. Um, so I've got a little video here and I'm just going to get it going. OK, so I hope uh, a few of you might know Kahoot. I don't know if there's many people who haven't used it before or heard of it. Um, but Kahoot, like I said, it's a quiz platform. And what happens is the you can create the quiz. So you can design the quiz yourself as the tutor. Or you can pick from quizzes that already exist. But I think when you're tailoring your learners um, material, so for independent learning, you want to create material that you may be covered with them that week, okay? So you can create this here with this quiz. Um, so I'll just show you here there, okay? So um, this is what it looks like when you play it independently, okay? Or sorry, in class time. What happens is I put up the picture and then the, the answers, okay? So there's four answers there and they have to pick the correct answer, okay? So like I said, you can play it two ways, um, in class or on their own independently. Um, so with this one, um, you'll see here, oh, sugar. Yeah. Okay, so there's a timer as well counting down. Okay, so I picked the correct answer. So I get a mark, okay, I get a point. Um, and then the click next. So it's what my learners found when they were using it, it took them a little bit, like a couple of goes kind of to get used to it. But once they knew where the buttons were to click, they were able to kind of work away on it. So it might be good to maybe create a screencast video for yourselves to kind of create and show, demonstrate for your learners how to use it. Um, so yeah, once they got used to clicking on the buttons for the next question, they were flying. Um, so this is what it looks like when I've created it here, okay? So this is one that I've created. So pick the words, so I've got the weather. That's for my Friday spelling class, okay? Um, now, I'm just demonstrating here how to make it from doing it in class time to giving it to them to work on independently. So the teach is when you do it in class time. And you'll see here, you need a second device. So I would show it on my screen and the learner would watch it on their video call and then on their second device on their mobile phone perhaps they would select the correct answer okay and um, now the other option again is to assign so with assigning it you'll see here there's a few options and um, i can check when 
the deadline for the quizzes, so they have to complete it by this time. Okay, so I'll check the date and the time. Now you can also take away the timer. So if, if you don't want to put your learner under the pressure of a countdown clock, you can get rid of that by clicking here on this button. Okay. Next one is randomize answer order. If you want to change around the answers. Uh, this one is actually very important here, the nickname generator. So when I was using this with my lower level um, learners, they found it difficult because it asks you to put in a name, okay? And they weren't sure what name to put in. And also in this, there's a leaderboard. So it shows the names of the people and that, that kind of competition isn't maybe necessary. Some, some people like it, some of the learners love it, but some learners might not want to take part in a competition like that. So you can actually click on this nickname generator, which will make it generate a nickname for you um, when you're playing. And it's just a fun little uh, nickname it gives you. So click create then, and this pops up, okay? So here, um, this is the, the creator view or the tutor view. And what I'll do next is I'll copy the URL, so the link or the address to the quiz, and I can pop that into an email or into a WhatsApp or into a message, a text message, okay? And when they click on it, then it will bring them straight to the quiz. So that's the way you can get that information out to your learner, that, that material. And um, if you're using Google Classroom, you can also link it into Google Classroom, or Teams, Facebook, there's lots of ways you can give this yeah. Okay. So sorry, I'm going to see some messages there. Okay, great. And um, yeah, so you can deliver it to your learner by WhatsApp. It depends on how you're contacting them, really. And um, now this is the nickname generator here. So when it says your nickname is, um, you click here on generating nickname, and it'll give you just a fun little nickname. It's usually an animal and a descriptive word. Um, like I said, it takes away maybe if you don't want that competition between learners um, because it will give you a podium and it gives you all kind of gamified kind of options, badges and points and things. OK, so this is just a demonstration then of what it looks like when it's being played by the learner once you've sent them the link. You can see there they click on the answer and they click on next. So once they get used to where the next button is, they're, they're flying at it, yeah. I've had a, a few requests actually from learners uh, for me to create more of them. One class actually just wanted to spend the whole class doing the quiz. So <laughs> unfortunately I, I wouldn't, couldn't do that, but we did it for a proportion of the, the time. Now, when you get a question wrong, it just says wrong, but great try. Okay, so it's, it's very positive. It goes, gives good feedback as well. And then the learner can see the correct answer. Okay, so they'll see that. And it doesn't move on actually until they click the next button. So they can read everything there until they click next. Okay, and then at the end, last question, they click on that and it's next. And um, it'll give you this page, okay? So when there's more people, you can see where you rank with the list of people, okay? And then down here later on, you can come back to this and you'll see the list of people there. Okay, and it's open again. So they can actually try it again. If you send them the link, they can have another go and see um, if they've improved, if they've um, managed to get the correct answers, if they've gotten anything wrong. Okay. So, oh, that's just started again. Okay. Um, so I might just have a quick look at some of the questions there. Um, so yeah. Great. Um, so the images for the quiz actually there's a, a bank of images that you can get. Um, sorry, there's, the light there. there's a bank of images that you can get when you're creating it and they're free. So Kahoot is free free for the most part, but you can pay for an upgrade for certain things as well. Um, it's a minimal payment scheme. I think it's three euros a month. So it's it's with that, you get a few little extra bits whereby you can create folders and things and organize your quiz then as well. Um, right. Okay, 
So um, the next one actually is Book Creator. So I don't know if people have heard of Book Creator before. Um, it's, um, it's an app or a website for creating digital books, okay? So it allows you to create books for your learners online um, and they can be interactive as well. Um, so I'll just demonstrate here how interactive they can be. So this is a library of books that I've created and it's a mixture. I've created them for all different levels that I teach. Um, so I've got practice your reading, practice your reading one, creative problem solving, internet skills, because I teach customer service as well. So we've got legislation and um, we've got an ESOL book as well down here. Um, so I'll just click here and I'll just bring you to one of my books. Okay, so this is one of the books that we created for the spelling class. Um, now you can see here, um, I just clicked on the link to it, but you can actually just share a link with your learners and they can actually look at this book and you can update the book as you go and it'll be updated for them. They don't need a new link every time. It'll just be the same link with the book. So I'll just show you now. hopefully that's working okay. And um, you can see it. sometimes it's a bit tricky actually when you're sharing your screen, but this is a book I created. It's my second learner uh, book for this group. So um, I created one and I put the contents here. Box D Irish Potatoes, St. Valentine's Day, Learning at Home Tips and Television Schedule. Um, and you can see here, there's actually um, a bubble here that I can click on and it'll read, or sorry, it'll be my voice reading the uh, what's on the page. Okay. There's also another option up here called Read to Me. And for that, it'll, it's the, the app itself is reading out what's on the page. Um, now, I don't have the sound turned on at the moment, so but you can have a look later at yourselves. Now, I'll just make this full page so you can see there. Whoops. OK. Um, so we've got our box tea potato pancakes recipe. OK, um, I put in pictures. Um, I put in sound. So myself reading it for each section. If I move on here. You can see lots of pictures as well. So you can create it, you can tailor it to your learner and what their interests are. Um, and then you can actually add links as well. So I've added a link to the Odlums website, which I use sometimes with my learners. So they'll have this book and they can click here on the Odlums website. And there's a pop-up of the Odlums website. So it doesn't take them away from the book. And they can click in, have a look, search the recipes and so on. All right. Okay. Um, and I'll just click through this quickly. Um, so the Valentine's Day one is there as well. And with that, uh, I've asked questions in the book. So they've got questions here that they can answer either on pen and paper, or I've given them a link to a Google Doc as well. So if they click on that, it should open up the Google Doc or the form, sorry they can type their answers into that and send it back to me. All right, so you can create a really interactive book there if you want to. Uh, learning at home tips then, I've embedded a video into this one. So they can actually click on the video and it'll play in the, in the, in the book as well. Welcome back. And finally, then we have the television schedule as well. And then they can click in there. Okay, so I've just got the television schedule with the times and the show. Then they can click there and open that up there. And it brings them to the ERT website where they can read today's television schedule. So again, keeping it um, relevant, keeping it suitable and keeping it enjoyable as well, because it's nice and bright colors um, and lots of interactive elements to it. Um, another one now, Jamboard. Has anyone used Jamboard? before. Um, so Jamboard um, is an online whiteboard and it's part of the Google Apps that you get for free when you have a Google account. All right. Uh, the Google app, or sorry, the Book Creator app is free. Yeah. And um, so an online whiteboard they can use for Jamboard. All right. Um, so with this, I use this with all, with all my classes actually. Um, and it's basically like having a whiteboard behind me or in front of me, you know, like you would in the classroom. Um, and you can have sticky notes, all right? So you have your sticky notes, but they're digital. And you can also insert images as well. 
Um, so I'll just demonstrate here. You've got your sticky notes. And we use it in class for energizers, icebreakers, introducing a topic, or just kind of discussing a topic as well. Um, so I'm just creating different sticky notes there. And with any of these, you can send the link, just copy the, the hyperlink or the URL or the web address and send that to your learner via WhatsApp, email, however you're sending it to them. So you can see there I've created some um, post-its, basically, sticky notes. You can move them around a little bit if you want to, make them bigger and smaller. And again, my ESOL basic group love this. They get really into it. They get really creative with the, what they're saying. Now, I'll just go back there a second. So you can also add images to the Google Jamboard. So if you click here on the image icon, so you've got your sticky note icon, your image icon, they can then go to Google image search and type in the, the picture that they're looking for. So I did this yesterday and the Royal Family was all over the news. So it was high up in Google. And so you'll see there, I'm finding a nice picture of rain. Okay. So it can be resized then. So you could either do this yourself as the tutor or you could get your learner to use it. Um, So they can create their own content then as well. We've got the sunshine. Speed this up a second. Okay. So I'm resizing the pictures and moving everything around. Um, and like I said, learners find it really great. It's really interactive. Um, and the learners, like a few learners can work on it together as well. So they can um, collaborate. And you can create materials such as kind of matching the word to the picture. So if you prepare this, you can get the learners to match the word to the pictures. And don't forget to give it a name. Always, always give your materials a name so that it's saved properly. Okay, so that's that. Um, so here's an example of some of them that I've created. So here you could create the pictures for the learner and a list of the words, and then they have to move the post-it around. Or you could give them maybe a number uh, relating to it and they have and the words, and they have to maybe write that down themselves. Um, so I'll just show you here. So this is Google Jamboard here. So if I have the pictures, I can find the right picture and move this to it. All right. Now, again, be careful with your share settings. You have to go in and click on your share settings with that and make sure that your learner is able to access it. Where's my sync? I'm sure. Where's my sync? Now, if I go back here, I could either get them to write it down or I could get them to change what it says here. Okay, click save. All right. So that's just a way, another way of using uh, Google Jamboard. Um, now, Google Sites is also a free app with Google, and I have no affiliation with Google. I'll just throw that out there. Um, but Google Sites allows you to create your own websites. Um, and this is where you can kind of gather all of your information for the learner in one place. Uh, and it's easy kind of to, it's an easy interface. Um, it's once you get the hang of creating it, 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 you get into the flow of it and you can get the creative with the colors and the pictures and everything. And so if I go here, I'll just demonstrate one that I created for this class. Um, so here we are, John's website. You could change that. You could call it John's work, John's reading, anything. Um, and page one here. Um, so I've got boggle for John to do. I've got some sentences, some words, sorry, to turn into sentences. Um, some reading. So there's a link there to the book that I was, have created on Book Creator. Um, and maybe a video or something to watch as well. So if you can click on that, and it'll bring us to the website for the book, for the video. And again, with your practice reading there. And so it'll bring us straight to the book, okay. 
And like I said, now this um, is, I created this on Jamboard and then saved it as a picture and then uploaded the picture to the website. Um, no, um, I'll have a look at the questions now in a second, sorry. Um, so, and then the boggle I got for an image from another website as well that I use, but you could create your own and pop it up there. Um, so that's Google Sites. And again, that's free and it's a great way for tailoring and putting all of your content together in one place. Um, so that it um, is easily accessed by your learners. Um, so a few other bits there, I have some video, word games, everyday materials like Odlums on Post, Citizens Information. Um, the RT player is great. Met Aaron is good for the ESOL learners and it's great for them to listen to someone talking about the Irish weather because we talk about it a lot uh, in conversation. Um, and again, they'll hear lots of uh, words about different areas in the country. YouTube with captions is always good as well. Um, so with captions, um, you, can, you can see on the screen what the person is saying, but you can also with YouTube, you can slow down the video. So the captions will be a little bit slower as well. Um, Wordplays and typing.com is a website, sorry, typing.com is a website I use with some IT learners and some ESOL learners because there's the alphabet popping up. So you can kind of call out a letter and get them to type it in or there's games there as well, word games there that they can play. Uh, some tools I use to create materials, Canva, Geniality, and Flippity is very good as well, I hear. I haven't gotten into Flippity too much yet, but I hear it's very good. Um, yeah, so there's a good few there. Citizens information is always very good as well for ESOL learners and for lower level literacy learners too. Um, and I used Dunstores actually with our spelling group recently just to show them kind of what shopping online is like um, because it has all of the different departments. It's quite straightforward website to use as well, um, unlike some of the other ones. So time is ticking there. Um, I'm going to come back to questions. I'm just going to have a quick look there. Is there any questions, Helen, coming in? Yeah. And no. Well, there's a few comments for us, isn't there? Okay. Uh, yeah, go on, Helen. Sorry. Um, well, actually, sorry. There was one question that struck my eye. Someone said, when you click on share settings, does this mean you have to be on a team together? Um, no, you can actually make it an open link, as far as I know. So you can share the link with anybody, I guess, as long as they... I think somebody else mentions there about Google account, having a Gmail account is, is quite good as well. And that's another good thing to set up with your learners is a basic Gmail account. Um, but the share settings are more to do with um, making it open for anybody to view. Yeah, once they have the link. Great, and is the Book Creator app free? Mary Claire, is that? It is, yeah, for the most part. Again, you can pay for an upgrade with all of these websites, you can pay for an upgrade. Um, but it's free for the most part, yeah. Um, and it's it's actually really good and they do really good um, tutorials and they have great instructional videos, but I recommend with any of these things just to get kind of stuck into them, have a go yourself and play around with them. Great, and someone else wants to know, where do you get the images for the quizzes? Yeah, I, I think I mentioned that um, there there's a bank of images on the uh, Kahoot website that you can use, but I think you can also upload your own pictures as well. So you could maybe go to Google, find a picture, download it and re-upload it um, if you want to, or use your own pictures as well. If you're outside, maybe take a picture of something. Great, so that's really right. it for the minute, yep. All right, so we might head into the breakout rooms now if everyone's comfortable enough with that. Um, Hopefully, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so within the breakout room, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to give you a Google Doc, okay, for a start. Thank you. It's recording again. Thanks, Mary Claire. I thought I pressed on the button. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I said, we'll be able to share that document, and everyone can have a look. And you're probably all having a look at each other's uh, comments on it already. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Great, so we might start with some feedback. Um, so we might get one person to maybe give one point um, from the group, and then we might go back around again for, to each group and see if we have time. Um, just one point that kind of came from the discussion from the breakout room. So we'll, we'll start with breakout one. Um, so I don't know if you nominated somebody or not. The group one, yeah, room one, sure, sure yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Um, well, we we got you know quite a few issues. One of them that struck a chord with me is the fact that some of our learners do not engage online because they can't. They don't have the technology. They don't have the skills. They don't have the wherewithal to do it. And maybe they're sharing devices, or maybe they just don't even have a device. And that's the issue because we, we're trying to connect with people who've got no connectivity. So we would they, they have, have internet issues as well, Claire? They would have low digital skills. They might have no English and they might have no broadband and no functioning smartphone. And we're trying to teach them remotely. And that is, that is a big issue. So we actually, in Donegal, we've been sending out packs to our students, but whether they engage with the packs, I can't say because I haven't seen anything coming back. That's all really. But there were loads hey, of good points made by the group, to be honest. And they yeah, should- If you might come back around, Claire, if we have time then, and yeah. we'll, we'll get some more info from you, if that's okay. That's, yeah, that's a big, big issue, you know, I guess sometimes we forget that uh, I think some like some of the cities were lucky enough to have access to great wi-fi usually not when it's stormy but usually um and technology is available from some centers but yeah it's difficult when you don't have that technology definitely and yeah. um, so we might talk about a few suggestions then as well great thank you Claire uh group number two yeah, um, we said um, kind of very similar to what Claire said, we definitely feel your pain. <laughs> um, yeah, but what um, what came out of it, I suppose, yeah, so, you know, not sending that access to devices is definitely an issue and an issue and some learners don't have um, access to internet or devices or the skills that they need. So if you give them all the devices in the world and all the Wi-Fi in the world, if they don't have the skills. And um, one of the tutors mentioned that, like, you know, sometimes we can spend hours, you know, trying to show them. And really, if, if we were face to face, it would just be different and better and all that. But even then, it would take a while to train them in on all of these skills that they need. Anyway, uh, what we did come up with, though, is that some of the learners, not all, but some of the learners have WhatsApp. And while we're not allowed to do classes on WhatsApp, we're allowed to. Well, sorry, some of us are not allowed to do uh, classes on WhatsApp. Um, Basically, if you can send learners a link through WhatsApp, I think that's the easiest for some learners. It's the most user friendly because that's the platform that they would be most familiar with. Um, so basically what happens then is, you know, once they have a link to something like Zoom, if we can use Zoom, you know, some of us can use Zoom. Some of us are, you know, have to use Teams, I suppose. Um, but, you know, for, for when Teams is a challenge to get on, and, you know, not only sending the link for Zoom, but also, um, you know, sending links, uh, I don't know, for YouTube, uh, you know, uh, videos and things like that, that they can access. But um, what we did say, um, you know, the, the social aspect of it was a big thing for learners as well, that they're missing out on because of uh, the current situation and the way we kind of said that that could be addressed, even with somebody who's only got a chocolate bar phone or even a landline phone. Um, that we could, um, you know, create a buddy up system where like there's one other learner in their class that they can buddy up with throughout the week, that they can practice something, whether it's speaking and listening, whether it's, you know, going back over what they did in class or something, but just to have the phone call and just to have the chat or, you know, video call or whatever else it is. Um, and then uh, one excellent idea that came out um, from um, Oshin was, um, you know, the local, any of your, your local public library, depending on where you are, um, that they do have online resources. So you'd link in with, so the tutor could send, for example, a link um, to the local library um, online resources. Um, and then, you know, I suppose some learners could engage with that online, you know, um, because like there's things like magazines and you know national geographic you know you know resources that are online for free like if you introduce learners to that they can do that themselves and outside of it but also then of course a learner could if they know how to use whatsapp they know how to send a photo or send to people um you know something like that that yeah you can take pictures on your phone and you know uh send or record messages and send them to each other via whatsapp as well yeah, uh, great yeah so 
Lots there. Yeah, great. Brilliant. Thank you, Ellen. Yeah, so definitely WhatsApp. If you have access to WhatsApp, you know, there's so much you can actually do with WhatsApp is sending links and sending messages, getting photos of work back as well, Claire, maybe. Yeah, so to kind of think about that as well. Um, group number three. Um, I don't know who's in group number three. Anyone? Have a look. Um, yeah, so there was a couple of bits that we discussed. Um, so it was kind of mm. getting at the basics first. Um, so like getting learners to use their emails and to be able to open up an attachment um, for, for some learners was a huge milestone, you know, um, to send something with an attachment. Um, and the digital technology that they have, um, like whether it's phones or that, usually they just use their phones like for social um socially you know and at home but now they have to use it you know um for education purposes um so sending um easy to open links um to learning through emails so that's kind of i think the easiest route you know that that everybody you know it, to to teach people um Ourselves. Of course, like Emma, keeping the when you're sending uh, emails, keeping the, the English plain, you know, and keeping it nice and straightforward as well. Not too much text on the email, just kind of here's the link, you know, so it doesn't yeah, get very learned. clear. And I think consistent as well. Like there's all these platforms that's available to us, but uh, like we will spend the time to get used to, to learning how to use these platforms. Whereas a learner or a trainee mightn't just have that time available to them to sit or, or the care, you know, to sit and, and to learn how to use these different platforms. Um, so I think consistency um, throughout. Um, we have to put, become confident ourselves um, as tutors to use this digital technology. So we're kind of, I think everybody is in the same boat, you know, kind of thrown in. We're now, you know, nearly IT specialists at this stage, you know, and kind of um, pushed into unfamiliar kind of territory, you know, with IT. I know I was, um, but um, and I can only imagine how it is for some students with very limited um, technology at home. Um, very true. So spoke about, um, so we found that um, Zoom, that it's a very user-friendly platform, whereas Microsoft Teams, while you can do so much on it, um, there is a lot of training, you know, um, involved to get to get the head around it um, for trainees. Um, Just on that, sorry, Emma, the Google Meet is very good as well. If you're using Gmail and you're using Google products, you might as well try Google yeah. Meet as well because it's all connected to the email account, you know? Yeah. Um, the Kahoot quizzes then, um, so it's great to use them. They be, can be accessed, you know, during time, class time. And then in the, the trainee's own time at home, you know, so you can use them for a variety of different different things. Um, PowerPoint, we found good as well, um, especially with audio included um, from the tutor, whereas you could merely have as if you're in the classroom, you know, that you'd go into very, you know, examples, real life examples where you're not going to put in text. Um, so the audio there for the slides are great. And um, this allows learners just to learn at their own pace. You know, the PowerPoints, they can go back, you know, go forward. They can do it at their own pace and learn at their own pace. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, there's great, great ideas there. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, group number four. Um, I know we're, we're close on time here, so we'll, we'll just hear from group number four briefly. Now, the great thing is, again, like I said about this Google Doc, is that if you're not able to share everything right now today, you can go back and have a look at this Google Doc and see. Um, we'll send out a PDF version of it, because I'll probably close it, and then we'll send out a version of it with the email. Uh, group number four, is there anything? Yeah, well, basically, we just said much the same things as other people are saying, that we were struggling with that social connection to uh, establishing a social connection with learners that are new to us, as well as new to online. Um, also, you know, talking about didn't like to mute learners because, you know, it's their only time they might have to interact with the week, but then you have dogs barking and babies crying and, and everything on, you know, just disrupting everybody else. And um, also talked about your quote that you said, enhance and not replace. And it just seems right now, 
um, the fact that you can get a learner online is success. Whereas, where's the learning? You know, the learning is is getting them online. So we're not really enhancing, you know, um, the learning. Uh, I don't know is it, if there's any learning even taking place other than getting them digitally a little bit more savvy. But there, there's that, um, and like all the rest of the groups, like we're posting where a lot of learners are ESOL learners of our learners, and they were struggling with, you know, they just have, they don't have laptops, just have the phones um, with what devices they could use, you know, what stuff you could use on the phones. Um, I think that's probably, you know, we're just, like I said, everybody as, as tutors, we're just learning as well. And this is great, these sessions, just to give us kind of ideas on what to do. Um, particularly with the lower levels and the ESOL students, it's very hard to um, engage and motivate. I guess those are the, the key words. Yeah, like keeping people engaged. And I guess that's what the idea is with cre creating opportunities for independent learning, is to kind of keep them mm -hmm. working outside of class time, because a lot of ESOL learners go back and, and speak their own languages when they're not in class, you know, and it, encouraging independent learning, encouraging them to go read, encouraging them to go watch RTE instead of watching things online, you know, or and Netflix. And then you're posting stuff out, you don't actually know if they're engaging with stuff that yeah. you post out. And again, like, like that, it's good. I know some people do it where they post out a pack and get the learner to send a photograph if they can with a smartphone. They send a photograph back to the tutor of the work that they've completed instead of having to post it back. Um, but that's great. Thank you so much for your feedback. I'm afraid we're running out of time here. Um, so I'm just going to pop back briefly to my PowerPoint and share. Um, okay. um, so where are we? Yeah, so just briefly other accessible options that you can consider maybe is, you know, the TV schedule on Sky, getting them to look at the Sky menu and going through what's on television, reading the little bits that it pops up, the little bits of information, uh, sending and replying to a text, that's, that's learning as well, you know, just sending a text and getting them to reply to us. Taking pictures of signs maybe outside using their mobile phones, subtitles on TV shows, movies and YouTube. Can you see that yet? Um, Google Translate, using Google Translate is good for words, not sentences or paragraphs, always encouraging that. And then Google Docs has a speech to text option as well. So they can try that out. It's a tool on Google Docs where they can speak it and then read what they've written, what they've spoken, All right? Um, so I'm just gonna go on. There's those, those quotes again. So yeah, we'll just go pop to the Nala one. Adult learning is all about addressing the needs of the learner, working at a pace that suits them and mapping out a learning pattern that fits in with their life and interests, okay? So always keep that in consideration when we're creating independent learning materials and resources. Again, enjoyable, suitable, relevant, okay? My, my three new favorite words, my key words, yeah? So keeping it enjoyable, suitable, and relevant. Um, and then thank you very much for attending and for your participation. Uh, you've been a fantastic group and I can see there in the document there's, there's so much writing. I haven't had a chance to read it all yet, but I'm looking forward to having a look. Um, so that's my name and my email address there as well if you need to contact me, if you want to contact me for any reason, I'll put that there. We will send out the slides and we'll send out the recording and, and the other docs and I'll try and get some of the links as well for examples of the work that I've created so you can have a look at those like the book and the website. Um, so yeah, like I said, thank you very much um, for, for being great participants today. Mary Claire, Mary Claire, thanks so much. That was a fantastic presentation. So many practical ideas, very well explained and shown how they work. And so really appreciate all the work you put into prepping this and to fantastic presentation. So thank you. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in and giving your ideas and sharing your experiences and tips. Unfortunately, we haven't really time to read through a lot of the comments come through her now are just saying thanks very much Mary Claire really interested in that type of thing so thanks to everyone and um, as Mary Claire said um, she I, she'll send on the, her presentation to me and I'll send it out to everyone who, who registered today as well as the video recording of this if you want to look through anything and any links okay I didn't read or anything that's still from from she's kind of big
Pardon? Um, so listen, like I'll say goodbye. All the best. Thanks again, Mary Taren. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thanks bye -bye. for having me.